Hi everyone, welcome to the church as it were. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, uh, get into the study. If we could turn to Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7, hopefully Jason's already read Acts chapter 6, verses 1 to 5 or 1 to 7. I uh, haven't asked them yet, but I'm going to ask them today to <laughs> read that particular passage. So this is a little bit weird for me. So today's going to be a character study on Stephen. Stephen, All right? As you can see, and I did this a few weeks ago. Jason did a study on Saul, not the Saul that we're going to mention soon, but Saul of the Old Testament. So I thought I would have a look at Stephen and go through these couple of chapters and see what Stephen was full of. So what Stephen was filled with. I guess. So uh, let's read this passage, uh, Acts chapter 7, beginning at verse 51. Okay, so this has happened after he's been arrested. He's uh, been in council and uh, he's in the middle of his speech. And through his speech, he's just gone through the history of Israel. And he's basically comparing the, 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 the folk here with not the, not the heroes of the faith, not the Moseses, but those who were opponents of them all right and he calls them out in verse 51 he says ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears you do always resist the holy ghost as your fathers did so do ye which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers such strong words here we see uh, who have uh, received the law by a disposition of angels and have not kept it when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth okay that's a pretty pretty hard out reaction but he I'm talking about stephen being full of the holy ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of god and jesus standing on the right hand of god and said behold i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of god and they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord that is a big reaction after hearing the heresy of stephen and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was saul again Saul that we talked about, uh, a different Saul, you know, the Saul who becomes Paul, uh, uh, the champion missionary of the world, I guess. Um, and then in verse 59, it says there, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not the sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we do thank you for this time that we can gather together, Lord. We pray that you be with each and every one of us, Lord. Help us to learn something from your word, Lord. And if there's any areas that we need to uh, improve in our walk with you, Lord. Uh, Lord, first of all, help us realize it. Sometimes we're stubborn, uh, too stubborn to hear that, Lord. And so help us to uh, open our hearts, our minds, our understanding to, to receive your word and to, to be ready to change where we need to change and to be ready to confirm things and uh, encourage uh, in our hearts, Lord. But if there are places that we need to change, I do pray that, uh, Lord, you'd help us to, to do that, Lord, and uh, help us to come to you in an attitude of prayer, Lord, knowing that uh, you, you forgive sins and that uh, you'll move on and you'll change our lives, Lord. We're here uh, to, to serve you and to grow in you, Lord. And so we do ask that you'd help us to do that, Lord, and, and to be an instigator of that, Lord. Again, we that we need to open our hearts and minds and understanding and really to do that. So again, we thank you for this time. I just ask that uh, you continue to lead and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's go uh, get into uh, this now. So Stephen was one of the seven uh, deacons first chosen by the church at Jerusalem. And he was noted among them as a man full of the Holy Ghost, uh, full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Now these men uh, the, a prerequisite to become a deacon was to be full of the Holy Ghost. And then as 
uh, as uh, the names were being read out. In fact, I'll read it here in verse 5 that says, And the same pleased the whole multitude. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and uh, Prochorus, and uh, uh, Nicanor, and Timon, and uh, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. So among those seven names, Stephen here was noted as a man full of faith in the Holy Ghost. All right. His mighty works and his uh, arguments did not make him a lot of friends. In fact, there was a lot of animos uh, not animosity towards him and he was brought before the council, as I mentioned before, and that was on the charge of blasphemy and heresy. Now, in the trial, his speech and his own defense showed uh, shows historically that the opponents of Christianity were exactly the same as, as those who had always opposed the true uh, faith of the Bible. And this, this nothing, nothing's different today as well. It's not different today. It's still the same. Now, uh, those that were at the trial, they hurried him to the death. Right? They hurried him. And what was supposed to be a just trial it was just supposed to be a trial, and Nick minute everything just went all over. It just just got on uncontrolled, right? Um, there was a violent, uncontrolled execution of this man Stephen, and obviously this led to his eventual death. And he's well, widely known as the first martyr. In fact, uh, Paul uh, calls him uh, a martyr. Uh, the Apostle Paul had heard uh, Stephen's arguments in the, in the trial and the uh, discussions that preceded his arrest. And long afterwards, uh, at his own death, uh, he mentioned that he was a martyr. But this was a triumph of Christian faith and love, which has taught many martyrs um, right throughout the whole ages, not the whole ages, but since his death, the ages since his death, um, it taught so many martyrs and, and Christians how I suppose we sh how we should die, right? And, and as we read and as we look at him, we're going to go ahead and and and, uh, and and see that, all right? And as we look at the next slide, this is what we're going to be looking at. Now there are many great things that the Lord did through Stephen, and this morning we're going to we're going to be looking at eight things that Stephen was filled with. All right, and as you see the list, that's what we're looking through. And as we go through them, you should be thinking, you know, about yourself. All right, he's filled with all these things. What about you? What fills your mind? Is it the things of God or is it the things of the world? And so as we look through these eight things, that's what I want you to be thinking about. Now, Stephen is a good example of what we should be filled with. So let's get into it. First of all, it was full of faith. Full of faith. Now, uh, we see here, and the same pleased the whole multitude. They chose Stephen, as I, I read before, in Acts chapter 6, verse 5, a man full of faith. And then uh, Acts chapter 6, verse 8, and Stephen full of faith and power and great wonders. Okay, now, faith, what? faith binds us to God. Now, faith has three qualities. First of all, it has a saving faith. And in John 1.12, we we'll read there, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Okay, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, walking by faith. Uh, so saving faith is, is uh, the act or the will and receiving Christ as Saviour. Right? Secondly is, is uh, walking by faith. It is living in obedience uh, for God. Acts uh, chapter 5 verse 29 we read there. And Peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to obey God rather than men. And then drop down to verse 32. And we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God had given to them uh, that obey him. And lastly we see faith rest. Faith rest is the attitude 
uh, of the heart to leave things in God's hands. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, it says, We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have, have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that what uh, he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall rise up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundance of grace might through thanksgiving of many re redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The inward man is renewed day by day. Uh, for, our light, uh, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and external weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So that's the word of the Lord. Again, the idea is leaving things in God's hands. We are to obey God. No matter what situation we find ourselves, we trust that God has his plans mapped, that mapped out for us. But first and foremost, we must fully place our faith with God. Second point is that... Uh, we are full, oh, Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, here, uh, same verse there. Here's uh, Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. I think there was another uh, passage a little bit further along. Hmm, okay. The full of the Holy Spirit. Please turn over to uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 with me. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. <laughs> but it does say it there, that way. Uh, it says here, yeah. uh, so how do we become filled with the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, sorry. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with with the spirit in verse uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse uh, 19 it says the speaking yourselves in psalms hymns spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord okay so one way of doing of, of being becoming spirit filled is sing right sing not just anything not just rubbish right sing making uh, sing hymns, spiritual songs, uh, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, make melody in your heart. The most important thing is to the Lord. All right, sing. Uh, give thanks. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, it says there, giving thanks always for the things God and the Father, um, and the Father in the name of the, our Lord Jesus Christ. So give thanks. Submit yourselves one to another. Uh, verse 21, this is exactly uh, that. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And then over to chapter 6. Being strong in the Lord. Okay, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, verse 11. Okay, putting on the whole armor of God that you may be able, um, be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right, now we're, uh, I think uh, Brother Josh is looking at the, the enemies. All right, one of them uh, being the flesh, one of them being, uh, we looked at it last week. Oh, I have to redo this one, but the flesh, the world, <laughs> and the devil. All right, so we uh, put the whole armor of God so we can uh, do this, stand against. The wiles of the devil, a lot of them are defense mechanisms, only one attacking mechanism, which is um, not the next point, not this point here. This point is praying always, Ephesians 6 18, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereon too with all pre um, perseverance and supplication for all saints. Lastly, fill yourself with scripture. Scripture. There is an E. 
Pete's covering it. Fill yourself with scripture. All right, uh, and uh, that's one of the um, points uh, that we'll be looking at later on. That uh, Stephen was full of. He was full of the scripture. But before then, we'll have a look at the next point. Point number three. He's full of power. And Stephen, being full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Now, power is the ability uh, to do things. Uh, God never asks us. Uh, okay, yep, yeah. God never asks us to do things without giving us the power to do them. But with every command, there is a promise. And over in Acts chapter 8, uh, well, a common verse, uh, if you want to turn over to there, it says there that, uh, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses un unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, and unto the utter uttermost parts of the earth. Now, we need power. We need power to share the gospel. All right, a lot of you will testify to that. We need power to uh, have compassion to the needy. All right, I certainly need that. <laughs> I'm uh, always thinking, oh, well, who's not needy? We're in New Zealand. Uh, we need power to teach God's word. All right, always need to be in prayer, always need to be in the book. All right, but we need power for that. Uh, we need power to rebuke and to edify others. That doesn't come easy. And we need it, the power to come from God. And when we are filled with God's power, uh, we are filled with God's word and God's spirit. And in uh, Micah, as it says there, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. And that's a hard thing to do. Rebuke's not an easy thing to do. Uh, and we need power. From God, not just for rebuking, but for everything. And uh, Stephen, he certainly had that. He had that in spades as, as you read the last of his uh, his condemnation of the people in the trial. Fourthly, full of light. Stephen was full of light. This is an interesting verse here in uh, Acts chapter 6, verse 15. And this is uh, something that we didn't really... Uh, look into, but here it is here. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. <laughs> the light within caused Stephen's face to shine as an angel's face. Now John, uh, Jesus is the light uh, of the world. John uh, Chapter 8 verse 2 says, Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus is the light. Now sin is ugly, very leprous. But Jesus' light can take that away and make our face shine as an angel's face, as it were. And there is a clear purpose for this. Because, as you can see up here, um, in Second Corinthians, no, we can't see it all. Uh, again, my fat face is in the way. But it says there, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. All right, so if you're in this particular chapter here, you can drop down to verse 6. But Stephen's light shining unto the lost, was effective. And even though Satan has a hold of this world, he's the God of this world, and even though Satan's got a hold of this world, he was a shining light. Now, how full are you with this light of the glorious gospel? How full of you are you? In verse 6, it says there, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of glory, of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is what we should be doing. All right? Commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. Why? To give the light of knowledge. Okay? To give. To give. 
Right? We are to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God uh, in the face of Jesus Christ. Stephen was filled with the light of knowledge. And here's a suggestion here. And as was uh, preached uh, maybe a month ago by Brother Shane, he says, let your light sh so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The whole, whole point of having light, right? There's the sentence here, right? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. All glory goes to God. Full of scripture. All right, we're not going to read this. I'm, in fact, this can be your homework. Um, so if you'd like to follow up and read this uh, chapter, but when you do, so um, chapter 7 of Acts, uh, but when you do, you'll soon realize how filled with scripture that Stephen was. He, he quotes scripture after scripture after scripture. And it goes through a history of Israel and, and their fathers and, and what they did. And he's got all the big names involved. He's got Abraham, Joseph, Moses, David, Solomon. Now, um, okay, Acts chapter 7 indicates this. Uh, now, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, we have. Uh, a, a, a bit of passage here it says for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints uh, and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of hearts right. not even knows your thoughts but knows your intents that's, yeah, all right. So now this was true in Acts chapter 7 because when Stephen quotes scripture, when he quotes scripture, we see their reaction in verse 54. So go over um, Acts chapter 7 if you're not there already. And in verse 54. When they heard these things, I'll put this on here. When they heard these things that were cut to the heart, we cut to the heart. We know how effective uh, the word can be, and we must follow Stephen's example and being filled with God's word. But how effective it was, is they were cut to the heart. Oh, there it is there. They were cut to the heart. Um, so we um so that's why we encourage reading of God's word. We encourage studying God's word. We encourage memorizing God's word. We encourage meditating upon God's word. A right, daily, a daily dose of God's word. All right, every day, not just on Sundays and Wednesdays and and whenever you feel like, but studying God's word day by day. Our fourth thing we see God uh, that Stephen was filled with is he was full of courage, full of courage. Now. Now, the face of man and the fear of man did not affect Stephen. Now, these men that Stephen was speaking to in the council, they had it in for him. He probably knew that, though, as Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 18, that says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Now these men were an opposition of the work of God, and Stephen does not hesitate to charge them with being stiff-necked and uncircumcised of the heart of resisting the Holy Ghost, uh, with not keeping God's law, and with murdering Jesus Christ. You stiff neck, and I'll reread this uh, passage here in Acts chapter 7, verse 51 to 53. Stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which shone before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now been betrayers and murderers. 
who have received the law by the disposition, uh, disposition of angels and have not kept it. He was full of man, full of a man, full of courage. And next point is that he was full of love. In case they then cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. They were listening to um, you know, Stephen, and as soon as they just, uh, as soon as he uh, he mentioned. In verse 56, behold, I see the heavens open and Son of Man standing on the right hand. Stop the ears. Feel like, like a little kid, la, 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 but was much the same. Ran to him with one accord and just. Uh, I, I'm guessing that this is just like a, a blind rage. Uh, and uh, if you are an angry person, I have been once in my life. Um, blind rage. Um, that side of me hasn't come out since yesterday. I'm just kidding. Um, but or just white hot when you get so mad that that, that nothing, nothing or no one can stop you. Um, I'm guessing that that's what happened as soon as they heard heard this. I see the right hand. Oh, I see the Son of Man on the right hand of God, uh, and they're just in out stone strong. Um, and everything there. But he was full of love. He was full of love. Now Stephen's courageous speech towards uh, the men did not go unnoticed. The word of God obviously cut to their hearts. Instead of trying to obey and change their life, um, uh, they stopped the preaching. The persecutors hurled stones at Stephen, and even though stones broke, his head, the stones were breaking his body, the stones were breaking his legs. They didn't break his heart, didn't break his love for Israel. And uh, as as he was getting covered by blood, Stephen wasn't angry at these men. No, no. His prayer was, his prayer was this here, he knelt down. And cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not the sin to their charge. And when he said that, he fell asleep. If we allow this uh, love of God to fill our hearts and minds, it will enable the servant of God to do greater things for Christ. Now, I'm not too sure if I can do this, but we are able to do greater things for the love of Christ constraineth us. Last thing we see is that he was full of wisdom. Wherefore, brethren, look ye among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. This was one of the prerequisites, okay, that you would be wise, full of the Holy Ghost. And then uh, Acts chapter 6 verse 10, they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. So we're talking about uh, Stephen here. Stephen was full of wisdom uh, because he spent time with God and, and Bible and prayer and preaching the gospel and humbly serving God's people. Are you, are you the same? Are you spending time in the Bible, how's your Bible life? Not just reading, but studying, meditating, thinking on these things. How's your prayer life? Is it just prayer meetings where you bring requests? Or do you come to God not asking for physical things, but also asking for spiritual things? Lord, help me understand what I'm reading. Lord, help me grow on you. Lord, help me be a, a, a servant. Let me know what the will is for today, for the next day, for the next week. What is the will for, of, for my, of, what is your will for my life for the next hour? Are you thinking uh, among these things? Um, we need to be following his example. 
Now, as we conclude, we'll go into Second Timothy. Second Timothy, and this is up here, um, except for that little bit right there. Uh, it says there in Second Timothy two uh, verses twenty and twenty one. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and made for the master use, master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Now in this passage, Christians are compared with vessels, and the purpose of Vessels are to be filled with good and useful things. The problem is that we may pick up many wrong ideas, many wrong attitudes, maybe wrong behaviours, and thinking that um, and thinking that need to be purged for the master's use. Are you prepared for every good work? What are you filled with? Let's use Stephen's example of. Uh, what we should be filled with because as Christ's uh, as Christ is uh, sufficient to carry Stephen's uh, Stephen through martyrdom so Christ is able to carry us through every situation of life so let's let's seek to be full of what Stephen was full of full of faith Full of the Holy Spirit, full of power, full of light, full of scripture, full of courage, full of love, and full of wisdom. All right, that's all um, I have for you uh, this morning. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll close in a word of prayer, and then um, I guess we can carry on the service as well. So, uh, thanks for listening. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this time. Pray for um, anyone that has um, uh, had your word uh, cut to their heart, Lord, that we know that the word of God is, is uh, quick and powerful. And so I do ask that uh, you know, help us to improve in any area of our lives that we, we need to, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, be with us uh, this week, Lord, as we, uh, I suppose, uh, are going back to level three on uh, Wednesday. And uh, just uh, pray for uh, just things to... to uh, I suppose moves smoothly, Lord. So again, we thank you for all that you do. Pray for um, uh, this week. Uh, pray for your blessings upon us. Thank you. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.